Let's not waste time with an intro. There's news from Chevrolet. The new C8 generation isn't really new anymore. Believe it or not, it was debuted in 2019, making it over five years old already, so we've had a bit of time to get used to its performance. Now, however, Chevrolet is back again to break the car industry with the new ZR1 for the C8 generation. So let me talk you through the press release, then give myself two minutes exactly to share my thoughts that you can respond to in the comments. The ZR1 is the range topping trim of any Corvette generation and the C8 ZR1 brings with it a few milestones. Still offered as a mid-engine layout, it features a 5.5 liter twin turbo flat plank crank V8 that pumps out 1,064 horsepower and 828 pound-feet of torque. This engine is dubbed the LT7 and currently holds the title for the most powerful production V8 ever made in America. It is also the first turbocharged factory Corvette in the model's history. The LT7 is built on the same architecture as the LT6, that crazy NA V8 found in the C8 Z06, albeit with some changes. Aside from the turbos, there's a new intake system, bespoke combustion chamber, exhaust, intake ports, unique pistons, connecting rods, and a secondary port fuel injection system to supply added fuel to support that power output. It is worth noting that these V8s will be hand-assembled at a performance build center in Kentucky. To stop the ZR1, Chevrolet has fitted a new braking system that features carbon ceramics. The result is that in just 24.5 seconds, it can go from 80 miles per hour to 200 and back down to 80. Modifications were also made to the transmission to ensure that it can handle the power. The inner and outer input shafts were upgraded and improvements were made to the gear capacity, oil management system, and control valves to handle the higher clutch clamp load. A series of functional aerodynamics allows the new ZR1 to produce more downforce than any Corvette before it, peaking at over 1,200 pounds at its top speed of 215 miles per hour plus. There is a standard carbon fiber front splitter, rocker moldings, side intake, and front underwings with deflectors. Air management is enhanced by the ducts in the hood and rear hatch to optimize aero and cooling. Making a comeback from the C2 generation is that split window design to add a dash of nostalgia and improve heat extraction from the engine compartment. For added form and function, there is an optional ZTK package, which adds a high downforce rear wing, front dive planes, and hood lip all in carbon fiber. Underbody strakes will replace the standard underwings and suspension is tuned with stiffer shocks. The tires replaced with Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 R's. Those are the facts and now two minutes of my opinions on the new Corvette ZR1. So I've put two minutes on the clock and we're going to go ahead and get started now. It goes without saying that I am very impressed by the new ZR1. To be able to pump out a thousand horsepower without any electrification is insane. If you look at the supercar market today, the Lamborghini Revuelto, Ferrari SF90, they both resorted to electrification. Both have all-wheel drive to handle that 1,000 horsepower figure. And Chevrolet did it in the Corvette with no electrification, eight cylinders, two turbos, and two-wheel drive. That's crazy. That's actually hypercar territory. If you go back to the early 2000s, Bugatti used 16 cylinders and four turbochargers to achieve the same power output. So I guess what I'm trying to say is Chevrolet is really embarrassing the supercar industry, and they've been doing that since the release of the C8. Just a standard C8 Corvette can outperform a lot of cars that are significantly more expensive than it. And let's not even talk about the Z06. But that's kind of where my problem with the ZR1 starts. Don't get me wrong, performance, undeniable. But it's supposed to be a car for everybody. It's supposed to be a performance car that is attainable. That's what makes the Corvette so great. It embarrasses supercars at a price point that really anybody can afford. And the guesstimations of a lot of the magazines for the MSRP on this new ZR1 is $180,000. There's not that many people that are going to be able to afford that. Pretty much just people that are looking to buy a supercar. And whether I agree with it or you agree with it or not, the reality is at the end of the day, it's still a Chevrolet. And for the people that have supercar money, most of them are going to buy a supercar, performance aside. So I don't know. This car, I don't know who this car is really for other than a diehard Chevrolet fan, which. I mean, if that's what it is, that's what it is. But that's my time. 
And those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.